John, how's things? It's uh, it's going. I, I'm, I'm sure glad to be here. A nice little break in the action. It's been a wild week, as you as you know. Well, I, I know, and uh, I just so we get it out there, in case people wonder, we're gonna we we discussed obviously the situation between the team and the city with the lease and the December first date that's looming there on the horizon. And really, there's nothing new to discuss. We understand that the the city has submitted a proposal back to the Iceman that is under review. Uh, and, and until we hear something one way or the other from one side to the other, there's really not much more to discuss. And you're not involved in that stuff. Your job is to go in there, call the game and, and do your, your pay grade, That's man. exactly right. I, you know, the media relations side, technically I'm, I'm, I'm in there, <laughs> but as far as the business side, luckily I'm, uh, I'm told to just keep focusing on hockey. Yep. So, and, and that's, that's what that, I love. So. That's what we want to do today. <laughs> that's we, what we, yeah, that's what we, we kind of got do. it all out of our system yesterday and yeah. until something new develops, there's really no reason to bring it up. So. Um, before we get into the hockey part of it, you've been now in Evansville for a few months now. Uh, how are you acclimating okay to the city, finding your way around a little bit better? I am. I've, uh, I, now I'm referring to Evansville as home, so when I'm in conversations with family, uh, I'm actually flying home on Thursday for a couple of days um, and coming back. Uh, I'm referring to it as coming home to Evansville as opposed to going home to Minnesota. It's just by, by, uh, by nature. So, uh, yeah, people have been so welcoming. The fans have really uh, given me – a warm welcome since I stepped in and I hope to continue to do a good job. Um, <laughs> and the team has been very supportive. Uh, and, and that's, I really appreciate that. So, um, so far so good. I love Evansville and, uh, hopefully I can stay here. Yeah. Uh, a while. <laughs> yeah. As well, as you've learned, they're, they're very passionate about the hockey team and, and yeah. hockey in general around here. And, uh, have you had a ski yet? I did finally. Excellent. Um, finally, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not West a huge side. fan. Oh, John. I'm not a huge fan. I'm sorry. Not everybody <laughs> loves your skis, West Side. You know, people. I'm, a, I'm a big Mountain Dew guy, and I think I was trying to compare them mentally. And uh, once I tried the ski, I disappointed myself. A little uh, well, bit I'm that sorry to hear that. But, but uh, oh, well, you know, <laughs> it's an acquired you, taste. You yeah. have to try it again. Yeah, maybe least, I will. I'll give it least, a second chance. Yeah, at least you gave it a chance. At least you gave it a chance. So. Let's talk about what's going on on the ice this season. The team's three and seven again. You're going to host uh, Alaska tonight, and Alaska sits at four and nine right now. Four nine and uh, and one, right? That's I correct. Uh, yep, I think they actually lost their second. Uh, I want to say their second shootout game uh, this past week. So yeah, they've had two shutout losses. I made that mistake yeah. in my media notes. I had them with one overtime or shootout <laughs> loss, but I think it's two. Yeah, so. I think you're right. So. Uh, from your vantage point, we've talked to Coach the last couple of weeks, and, and one of the things that has been a sticking point for him, obviously a very young team. He's got a lot of speed on this team, which is what he wants, you know, guys that are fast and 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 rough-and-tumble hockey players. They've spent a lot of time on opponent's side of the ice just struggling to get the puck in the net. From your vantage point, as you sit up there in the press box and you look down and you're obviously following the action very closely because you have to relay what you're seeing to the people that are listening, what seems to be the big hang up there for this team to not be able to get some points on the board? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a couple of things. I think uh, it's it's taking advantage of those scoring chances when you have you know odd man rushes, um, when you have power plays, when you have point blank opportunities, and if you're not putting the puck in the net, it. I don't want to say it's demoralizing because you keep going at it and you keep going after their goalie, but um, after a while, it, the goalie gains confidence. Um, if you're not putting pucks in the net. Sometimes maybe you lose a little confidence there, and and I think it's been just a, a roller coaster of, of struggles in the offensive end. But it's not it's not as if they're not getting those chances or mm-hmm. you know th- those opportunities. And there are a lot of players on this team that have proven to put points on the board in their careers, uh, whether it be at the junior level, the college level, or even the pro level. Um, going back last year, year before, these guys can score. It's just a matter of actually uh, scoring. So um, we're hoping to. I mean, we've had one or two flashes of of bright, you know, bright games where where guys have been able to put the puck in the net, mm-hmm. and then there have been games where you feel like they're going to come out and score four or five, and we score two and and get beat by a goal. So, I think it's important to get the first goal, which we've only done twice, and in both of those games that we scored the first goal, we won. Um, but in in the rest of the games, we're I think one and seven uh, when allowing the first goal. So. Right. I think that you know it's 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 cliche a little bit. The first goal is important, but and statistically it's true. I mean, you want to get that first one to get some of that momentum because if you're playing from behind every night, uh, maybe one or two times you'll come back, but it's uh, it's tough. Well, the, you, you talk about the individual scoring and, and different things, and these guys scoring at different levels of their careers, uh, but you still have to play together, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. and that's the thing. That's that's the uh, no I in team kind of thing, right? Uh, you're not on the coaching staff, but you're around these guys a lot. You see the games. Are they starting to gel a little bit as a team? Because I, I would think 
once they get kind of used to each other, then the scoring will come naturally, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're finding some pieces to the puzzle that we like. Um, for instance, there's a line that we stuck with all weekend on the road that we're going to stick with tonight, and that's Dalton Levier at center and then two speedy young wings, uh, Tyson Fawcett and, and Alex Weidman on the wings. And, and that's just an example of guys that, are, that seem to be meshing, that if, if we can get those three on a roll and then we can get line two, line three going – um, then, then we have the pieces in place. Then maybe those pucks will start going in the net, and we can stick with lines like that. So obviously, there's, there's early in the season, any city in in North America, there's some shuffling of lines. You want to make sure you have the right guys in there and and see what works and who gels. Um, and it's no different here. It's just a matter of finding lines that are going to produce, um, that are going to know their role and and help uh, help us score some goals and get some wins. So. Um, I think there's still some degree of shuffling just with guys that we get sent from Binghamton as well. Um, you know, we have a newcomer, Alex Guptill, who played his first three games this weekend that Binghamton sent us. Um, we're hoping that he can really help us. Um, in the first period, he played in an Iceman jersey. He had three or four great scoring chances then got knocked out of the game in Kalamazoo with a, a, a nasty hit. Luckily, he returned Saturday and Sunday, but um, he's a guy that if he gets, he gets rolling, he has some, some good offensive skill, too. So, Well, you talk about speed. We had talked to you when you first got to town. Uh, we were out at one of the show me's, mm-hmm. I believe, for, yeah. their, for our uh, Miller Lite football tour. And you had mentioned, you know, you, you've, you've done play-by-play, but this is a step up for you as well. <laughs> you talk about speed of the game. Yeah. Uh, this game a lot quicker than, than other games that you've done. How are you adjusting wise play? Because trust me, I feel your pain. But football is a little bit different than, than hockey. At least football slows down at some point, and I don't have French Canadian names that are longer. Than oh my arm. man, I, I felt like the adjustment has been fairly smooth. I got some good feedback. Game number one from Al Sims actually, because he's been around the game so long. Mm-hmm. He listened to my broadcast afterwards and said you sounded great. Uh, the one thing I'd suggest is don't use first and last names because you just don't have time for it. Just go with last names, especially when you have D.U. de Fauvel to go with <laughs> and names like that. Um, just call him D. I, just D or, or Favs or however you want to call him. Um, and, and I think the adjustment's been pretty good, but I had an epiphany, Jimmy, in, uh, in wheeling that I need to start working out a little more like a, a, a band would when they're getting ready for a concert tour because – um, when we had that three on three overtime on Saturday, I was so out of breath that I was like, man, I need to start getting in shape again because that three on three overtime is some fire wagon hockey and it's, it's entertaining, but it's difficult to call. How's that? How's that wheeling press base? Is it still the same press box? Better. Is it just that smaller deal that sets kind of right on top of the crowd. Uh, no, they they put some money into that thing. It's, oh, okay. it's up top in the upper deck, so you're way up there. Oh it's, wow! It's a trek. I didn't know they had an upper deck when I was there. <laughs> yeah, it's a trek to get up there, but that thing is nice. Um, okay. And and, and uh, they put a lot of money into that building. So well, I trust was me, actually, you saved a lot of swear words from coming uh, on I'm the air. Sure. Because if that same guy that was there when we played indoor <laughs> yeah. football there, he. Uh, he doesn't have a dictionary. He doesn't need one. They're yeah. all they're all on, I on met the, a few on the of porn their fans. channel. You know? <laughs> John Peterson, our guest, he uh, the voice of the Iceman, also director of broadcasting and media relations. It is Ford and O'Brien, ESPN Evansville 1053 online, ESPNEvansville.com. Uh, there's been some some movement roster wise. I know you guys have run into some goalie issues. Uh, bring us up to speed on where we're at with that. Well, it's it's ironic, and I don't want to say funny because it, it's not it's not fun to to go through the the goalie carousel that we've been going through with some of these injuries. But the the irony in it is we started the year with so much depth at, at the goaltender position. We had three guys capable of playing in this league: in Scott Grenham, Christopher Banksberg, and Keegan Asmonson. And we traded for Orlando. We almost thought we had too many goalies because you're only allowed a certain amount of roster spots. Well, Grenham's been hurt. He's been on, we had to backdate him to, to injured reserve to November 2nd because um, he's been out for so long. And then Banksberg, who's finally, I mean, he's playing well and played seven straight games and in Wheeling was very, very good, gets hurt in the second period, couldn't return. It's, it's semi-serious to the point where we're calling it week to week at this point. So Keegan Asmundson is literally our only healthy goalie because Scott Grenham now just got called up to Binghamton because Ottawa had a goalie get hurt, and Binghamton had to send one of their goalies to Ottawa, and so they were left with one. We sent Scott Grenham back to Binghamton, and he's healthy enough now, and by rule, even though he's on IR here, he can play in Binghamton, which is just kind of kind of odd how, huh. that, how that works. So we've actually been scrambling to find a backup for tonight. Um, luckily, we have a good relationship with Peoria, excuse me, of the Southern League, and uh, they sent us a goalie... Um, who we actually had to send back today because of immigration reasons. With the, it just wasn't approved in time. It was mm-hmm. just such a fast turnaround. 
So we have a, a guy on his way down to Evansville right now that uh, we will all meet for the first time. I just I just learned his name about 15 minutes ago. I believe it's Dustin Carlson, and he'll be backing up Asmundson tonight. So it's it's interesting how you go from having a, a good goaltending problem to a bad one in a, a matter of days. Now that's the just, immigration thing that's that's the we we were talking earlier before we started the yeah. interview before Donald Trump starts calling about immigrants <laughs> finding their yeah. way into Evansville. But yeah, a whole different. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's the Canadian. He's a Canadian citizen, and that has to be approved. You said it takes about a week, so they sent you a U.S. citizen. Yeah, and uh, and so we we were kind of. A, reminded of that today mm-hmm. we'll put it um so so their goalie uh that was sent to us was a, an ottawa senators draft pick uh francois brassard and, and he's from montreal or from outside montreal and quebec and um and and he has he has his visa but in the southern league there's a different requirement it's not as advanced as uh, the okay. echl or ahl so for that to get approved by the echl there's a, a huge process and it's I, I don't even begin to understand it um but they have to approve it and it usually takes six or seven days um and so we had to send uh, brassard back to peoria he's on his way back there right now meanwhile they're sending us an American goalie where we don't have to go through all that uh, as an emergency fill-in. So uh, Dustin Carlson will be that guy. Tonight, uh, game against Alaska. It is college night tonight, right? Correct. Um, college students with a, a student ID can can get discounted tickets at the Ford Center ticket office. Um, and they'll be giving away a free iPad to one lucky student. Uh, all they have to do is just register when they get in the building, um, and they could get a free iPad. And Computers Plus is sponsoring that um, for us, so we really appreciate that. And, and College Night, apparently, uh, from my understanding, and I'm new, so I've been briefed by our, the rest of our front office staff, <laughs> College Night is every Wednesday night. So um, we have five Wednesday games left on the schedule, 6.15 starts each time, which is new this year, and uh, college students can take advantage of that. Awesome. That's John Peterson, the voice of the Evansville Iceman, also the director of broadcasting and media relations. Uh, kind of filling in for Coach Sims this week for In the Crease. It's Ford and O'Brien, ESPN Evansville 105.3 and online, ESPNEvansville.com. John, thanks for stopping by. You're always welcome and uh, enjoy talking to you. I appreciate it. Good seeing you guys again. Thanks for having me.